Should the child, should the child suffer? It's not a child, yeah. a child and it's right. not a child yet. Yeah. Why isn't it a child? It's not a child, it's not a child yet and it's not Why suffering. Not child, and I think an abortion is also a consequence for her decision. It is also a very difficult decision for her to make a bunch of cells with no feelings and no wants yes. in the world yes. who, who has the potential to ruin someone's life or multiple people's life, yes. okay, is something that can be not killed but aborted. If you don't let a girl who wants to have an abortion have an abortion, there is a higher chance she will develop depression from that than simply having an abortion. Besides, wait, an abortion. Any statistics wait. to back that up? First of all, I would rather my mom aborting me if she wished to in the beginning, if she would have conceived me in early life, like in her, in her earlier years, if she would have not wished to conceive me and she would decide to abort me, I would rather that than her having to have me. Absolutely. Right, so in other words, your argument is not about viability. It is because it I stated because I've just demonstrated that okay, you I would you would still carry out abortion even if we could preserve the viability of an embryo. Would you say that there's any point at which abortion becomes wrong? I wanted to talk about what is happening in America today. In America today, it is quite likely that the Supreme Court is going to return the issue of abortion back to the federal states. In other words, it will be decided by each state whether to allow abortion in that state or not it will no longer be a federal issue. And I want to point out the hysteria and fanaticism of the pro-murder lobby, the pro-abortion lobby. How those pro-abortionists launched arson attacks against counselling services for pregnant women run by the Catholic Church. How those fanatics and extremists barged their way into Catholic churches and disrupted the Catholic Mass. How those bigots and how those vile, repugnant, militant, graffitied churches saying that if abortions are not safe, neither are you threatening property and life because of their fanatical devotion to the murder of children. And what did we see by the liberal media? What did we see by the virtue signalling hypocrites that are the celebrities and the influencers of our age? Did we see them condemn any of these actions? No. But would they have condemned those actions if they had happened to a mosque after a terrorist attack? Yes, they would. So in other words, according to these bigots, according to these extremists, according to these fanatics and their sycophantic celebrity cheerleaders, it's okay to interrupt religious services. It's okay to firebomb Christian charities. It's okay to vandalize Christian places of worship. If the same thing had happened to a mosque, you would have been hearing about Islamophobia for weeks on end and the importance of suppressing Islamophobes. But yet, these Christophobic militants were able to target Catholics in the United States, target their places of worship, target their charities, and even the President of the United States could barely condemn it. So-called Catholic. Just like the so-called Catholic Trudeau couldn't condemn 
the burning of 38 Catholic churches in Canada. He said it was understandable. Imagine 38 mosques in Britain being burned. Do you ever think that, the, that a Prime Minister would come forward and say it's wrong but it's understandable. We, wouldn't hear the end of it. we would not hear the end of Islamophobia. But that is acceptable in Canada and the United States of America. Furthermore, and I call you not to get in bed with that kind of hypocrisy, but call out both the people that did it and the people that support it. Furthermore, the Catholic Church has failed to excommunicate President Biden and the Speaker of the Senate, Nancy Pelosi. The Catholic Church says that because I am not a Roman Catholic, I can't receive the Eucharist in a Catholic Church. But they are allowing a fake Catholic, Biden and Nancy Pelosi, who are anathemas to the Catholic Church, to receive the Eucharist in the Mass. How is it when I believe in the Catholic teaching on abortion more than Biden, I am refused, but a Catholic is not refused even though he supports abortion and the Catholic canon law forbids him to do so. And so I want to encourage Christians of every denomination to go to Catholic Mass and to receive the communion. Because if they're going to let a child killer and the cheerleader to the murder of children receive communion, they can't stop you, who are pro-life, but non-Catholic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let us be clear. Abortion is genocide. Amen. More children have died because of abortion than died in the gulags of Stalin or the concentration camps of Adolf Hitler. More human beings have died because of the fanaticism and the death cult of liberal progressive society so cool. than died under the Marxists of Russia and the Nazis of Germany. Let the children come. It is time to end this genocide. Now! Any questions about this topic? Any questions on abortion? Come board. Come board. Did, did you hear, Bob, that the, um, would be the Archbishop of San Francisco actually said he, uh, Nancy Pelosi should be uh, refused communion in all of the churches in his diocese. We're waiting to hear what so-called Pope Francis comes back and does to him. Yes. But at least he said because though Nancy Pelosi and those others you mentioned are de facto excommunicants. Yes. So, yeah, just... Uh, so, I'll reply to that. The question is, did I hear that Bishop, uh, Bishop Salvatore excommunicated Nancy Pelosi? And the answer is yes. But why did it take him 10 years to do it? Uh, 10 years. 10 years. <coughs> he should have done it. <coughs> hey, Fever. Drink the water, Bob. Drink water. He should have done it on day one. Those who support abortion. Yeah or excommunicated from the Christian faith. Amen. You cannot be a Christian yeah. and support any form of abortion. Amen. Abortion yeah. is murder. There is no justification for the murder of the most innocent and the most vulnerable in our society and we have industrialized the murder 
of millions of children. Next question. Next question. On that. Question on abortion. Or on how it relates to so-called Islamophobia. All right. Any questions on abortion? Any questions on abortion? Going once. Going, going twice. twice. <laughs> Any questions on abortion? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. All right. I'd like to go on to my next topic. Please okay, do. Okay, okay. <laughs> I am. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Bob. Yeah. Good question. Where does the word of God condemn abortion? So, what does the Bible say about abortion? The Bible states that life begins in the womb. When Mary went to Elizabeth, her cousin, whilst they were both pregnant, Elizabeth said, why should it be that the mother of my Lord has come to visit me? For when I heard the, your voice, the baby inside of me leapt within my womb. When the angel announced the conception of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, he said that that which is in you shall be a holy thing, shall be the Son of God, because he shall be conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. It says in Scripture that I knew you before you were born, and I knitted you together in your mother's womb. The Scriptures state that life begins at conception and life life is sanctified by the fact that God is the creator of life there is no justification for the wholesale industrial slaughter of children in the Western world that has led to the deaths of 60 million children across America, Canada, the UK, France and Germany. This annihilation of the unborn must be made illegal. Those that support it are like the Germans who supported the Holocaust of the Jews. They knew it was happening, they supported it, they applauded it. And if you support abortion, you are like a German seeing the death trains taking the Jews to their deaths and applauding them as they go. Next question. The answer is yes. Next question. Other questions on abortion. Going what? Abortion. Good or bad? Bad. Very bad. Very bad. Extremely bad. Next question. He's got a question. He's got a question. Come here. Come here. Let's do a debate. Uh, no, no, not debate. Uh, I've just got a question. All right, question. Question. Can I have to answer? Yeah, you got some music. Yeah. Go on, ask yeah. a question. Um, what does it say in the Bible about animals? That, that's not an abortion. <laughs> what? What are you on about? He's asking a question that's not an abortion. Do we have a question on abortion? You've got a thing in your head. Do we have a question oh, on abortion? abortion. Oh. There you go. Any questions on abortion? He's aborting this. <laughs> Any questions on abortion? Abort. Any questions on abortion, ladies mother? and gentlemen? So the question is, can we have abortions if they save the mother's life? It's a good question. It's a good question. Christians have the concept of what's called double jeopardy. The idea that if your intention is not to abort a child, but your intention is to save the mother's life, but as an accident of the process of saving a mother's life, an abortion occurs, 
That can be allowed in extreme circumstances. But no, ab one second, but no abortion for a Christian can be allowed if the desire, the intention is to take the life of the child. Go on, Steve. So if the intention is to save the life of the mother, yes. and there's genuine belief, yeah. and there's genuine belief that if she proceeds, oh, she will die. Yes. If, if, uh, if the clear consequence will be the death of the child, or embryo, yes. or whatever, yes. is that not allowed? So, there's an example that is used within those who support the idea of a pro-life position. It's the un it is. It's the idea of an embryonic, of, a, of a, a uteristic cyst, on a cyst on an ovary. If the operation to remove an ovary to prevent a cyst from rupturing inside the woman results in the death of the child, tragic as it is, Christians would permit it. But no action with the deliberate intent of killing the child on purpose could be permitted. If it's an inevitable consequence, if it's an accident, of an operation to save the mother's life. Yes. It's not an abortion. Next question: Is every sperm sacred? Can I ask another question? Let, let her. Oh, yeah, go on. Oh, yeah, go on. Women's go on. reproductive go on. rights. Yes. You what's the question? No, why are men? So we can't talk about black rights either. No. Or disabled rights. It's about or women's, women's rights. Women's reproductive rights. So you, ha you can only discuss something if you're. They're, they're talking. What's your question? Can I ask a question? Yes, go on. What about a 16-year-old girl who accidentally got pregnant? and suddenly all of her life goes to trash because she can't have an abortion. Say again? What about a 16 years old girl who got pregnant and now because she can't have an abortion all of her life got dumped in the trash? Right. So the question is, so the question is, well actually we got it recorded. So in answer to your question, sister. Sister? Yes. Sister. Uh, anyway. So in answer, in answer to your question, in answer to your question, I believe that we are letting women down by putting them in a position where lots of them think that abortion is the only solution to the situation that they face. I think that if you argue for a pro-life position as I do, it's incumbent that you also argue for proper support for women who find themselves with unwanted pregnancy, and that means real investment in those women, including counselling, uh, uh, availability to adoption services, counselling again, financial support and to change the attitudes of any culture that would seek to shame or villainize them because they became pregnant. Okay, but do you understand? First of, first of all, being pregnant for itself can ruin someone's like life in general yeah, because she can, it's really hard to be in school while you're pregnant, not mention while you're in the hospital, something you lose school, and the girl is 16 years old. While the embryo inside her body is not even alive yet, it, it doesn't have an heartbeat. A heartbeat. A heartbeat doesn't define life. Okay. Is an amoeba alive? A what? Is an amoeba alive? Regardless of that. No, answer my question. I answered yours. Is an amoeba alive? Yes. Does an amoeba have a heartbeat? No. So heartbeats don't define what's alive. So let's not define alive. What about a sperm? That can create a baby, yes, just like an embryo. Is every sperm sacred? No. So if a sperm is not sacred, why is an embryo sacred? So that can create life. So according to what you say, and if you, if you justify it using the Bible or whatever, then masturbation isn't allowed as well. So, so let me answer your question. Let me answer your question. First, so let me answer your question. Okay, can I just say one last thing? Yeah, go on. So every pro-lifer, you tell me that every pro-lifer doesn't masturbate. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. So, so now, let, now, let, now let me address your point, because the point is, I agree, if you argue for a pro-life position, I'll go further, I would say, I would say that it is incumbent upon the state to hold men equally responsible for the care of any children that we ask women to have. Men, if we're going to pass a law that says abortion is illegal, we should also pass laws we should also pass laws. We should also. James, James, calm down, bro. Calm down. So, ladies, 
So coming back to you, yeah. right? We should also pass laws that make it obligatory for men to provide for the care of the children that they help to create. It's got to be that way. Men can't get away scot-free. If they get a woman pregnant, they are held responsible. Now, coming back to your 16-year-old. So, uh, you'd listen. So, in terms of the 16-year-old that you just talked about, uh, pro-life society needs to invest in that 16-year-old to make sure that she receives a complete education, to make sure that if she can't decide to raise that child, her child can find its way to a loving family, yes. to make sure yes. that she is fully counselled for any emotional consequence of these decisions, yes. and to make sure that her does career that does not happen? suffer for any of these decisions. A pro-life culture means that we have to support women, women and hold so men as much responsible for the life that they create. First of all, some ladies, after they give birth, they can create depression. They can harm their body in multiple ways. You're taking a 60 years old girl's body and destroy it. And a woman that dropped out of school because she was pregnant and she couldn't keep going is not the same as a man who maybe have to stay there and support the kid, but still can get to stay in school, even if she catch up on her education later. It harms her teenage life. In general, men making decisions over women's body, they do not understand the consequence of it, no matter how much you read, because you do not understand. Can I reply? Yes, but second of all, you did not answer my sperm question. You did not legitimize how it is that an embryo that still hasn't became a baby and can be I'll address them. I'll, I'll address both of those points. I'll, I'll answer those two points. So, I'll deal with the sperm question first. Let's talk sperm. Guys, let's talk masturbation. Right? Let, let, let's be clear. Right? <laughs> Never heard of it. Let, let's talk about sperm. I'm trying to answer the lady's question, Steve. I'm trying to answer the lady's question. Right. So, no, no, no. I'm going to address, no, I'm going to address those two points. So first point, a sperm is not an embryo. Amen. An unfertilized egg is not an embryo. Pro-life Christians don't believe, do not believe, do not believe that life begins at sperm. We believe life begins at conception. So therefore, it is the embryo, the fertilized egg, that is sacred. So that answers that point. Second point, second point, second point. You asked about the 16-year-old and the consequences. The point that the, the point that the sister is making, she's trying to argue for a life without consequences. I'm sorry, but that is not the real world. In the real world, in the real world, you will always face consequences. And some of those consequences are that your feelings will suffer. That is a fact of life that you are going to endure whether you have an abortion or not. Arguments and appeals to emotionalism are invalid. And furthermore, if you're trying to argue for a consequence life where you never have to face depression, how many other things should we apply that logic to? How many other things shall we try to save people from suffering depression from because of the choices that they make? This is clearly a bad way to organize your life. Okay. So, first of all, regarding the sperm, even a fertilized egg is still technically a bunch of cells. It's alive. Scientifically. I'm talking scientifically. I agree, it's still alive. Sperm is still technically alive if we count that the same thing. And wait, okay? Scientifically, it's still a bunch of cells that are only gonna probably to develop to be a baby yes. okay now girls do face the consequences after like they get pregnant because even an abortion is not such an easy thing for a girl to do i know lots of them suffer depression because they have an abortion but if but most but why aren't you trying to preserve them from that kind of depression Wait, as well because if a girl wants to have a depression a, a de if a girl wants to have an abortion the chance that you not letting her have an abortion is a bigger chance that she will develop uh depression over that over 
having an, abro an abortion. If you don't let a girl who wants to have an abortion have an abortion, there is a higher chance you will develop depression from that than simply having an abortion. Besides, wait, an abortion. Any statistics to back that up? Wait. <laughs> logically, okay. I'm talking logic, okay. That was an, an appeal to an emotion. Okay, wait. Now, it's not that easy to have an abortion. Also, because it takes money and it's painful sometimes. Okay, and I'm saying it because girls do face the consequences. Girls do face the consequences. And in general, if a girl is having, if you, if a girl does decide to. Um, have sex and then she gets pregnant then obviously she has to face the consequences but that consequence can be an abortion you stopping the consequences will be easier on a 16 years old girl can I, can I or a 15 wait or a 15 years old girl so in general you're making their life harder even though they're just kids kids do make mistakes and a lot of times a lot of times you may wait wait for all can you please tell all the people that are shouting behind you to be a bit quieter so we can have a proper discussion. I would love to have a proper conversation, okay, but reply. I can't control these people. Okay. So the point that the point that I would say to you, the point that I would say to you is that there's no way of getting around consequences. What we need to be teaching people is responsibility. Now the reality is people are always going to make mistakes. So we stick sticking with this 16 year old girl as our example. I would believe that we need to teach people to burden and to take on the responsibility of their actions and I believe that that falls just as much on men who get away scotch-free at the moment they get away scotch-free because they get a girl pregnant she's the one that suffers with the hard choices she's the one that suffers with the depression and the consequences whether she has an abortion or not because both ways lead to depression and both ways lead to consequences and the guys get away with it and I think that needs to stop I think men, if you get a girl pregnant, the state should force you in some way within the limits defined by the woman to care for her child. Now, you're essentially arguing that we shouldn't let people face the consequences of their actions. That is a bad way to organize society. You can't protect everyone all of the time from the consequences of their actions. What you can do is when they, if you create a climate of responsibility and someone makes a mistake, step in to help them. We are creating an abortion culture. We're creating an abortion culture because we're trying to escape from consequence. It's a bad way to organize our culture. It's a bad way to organize society. I agree with you that a 16 year old gets pregnant without people to back her up, she needs help. I am arguing that the best kind of help that she should receive is the one that makes sure in a pro-life culture that her life can continue with the baby or if she gives it up for adoption, right? Now you, you mentioned about the sperm, the sperm being alive. I agree with you, a sperm cell is alive. But a sperm cell can't be a human being. Technically it can once it fertilizes an embryo. Exactly, and that's the difference. And that is exactly no, the difference. No, that is that is egg like No no. The moment the moment the egg the moment the egg is conceived, the moment it is fertilized, it has a unique genetic code that is different from its father and its mother. That means that there is a, a, a an ontological categorical and qualitative difference between a fertilized egg and a sperm or an unfertilized egg. They are not the same thing. Yeah, of course. Okay, so for your consequences uh, part, first of all, I'm not saying people shouldn't receive consequences for their action. I completely agree with consequences. But also, in like, when someone, like, like does a criminal act, they're not punishing the first act as the second and the third because they realize people sometimes make mistakes and they gotta learn. Yeah. And you take what you you give, like for some of the, the women, the worst possible outcome over a mistake. And it could be a 15 years old girl. Like, I do think there should be consequences, but I think those consequences are a lot of what you said, being have to be pregnant 
those consequences are harsher than the, they deserve. So I do not encourage not having consequences over your action. I think that's a horrible way to raise children. I'm saying the way you define consequences is specifically this one outcome, okay? And it's not necessarily how to be this one outcome. Because a girl having to tell her parents, I'm pregnant, is an awful consequence on its own. Because parents get mental over that. Can, can I reply? Wait, and secondly, so I want to ask, do you define a living thing as like having a unique genetic code? Because if that is, then that is the difference. But in general, you state a live thing. That's why you're pro life, because it's a can live I, thing. Wait, and it's sperm is a live thing, so you have to define a live thing. Yeah. Because in general, the way you say it, yeah. there is a very big difference. But you first said it, it doesn't have to have a point. Like, it's very confusing. A, geni a unique genetic code is how you define a live thing. Can I reply to that? Yes, please. So. The pro-life position is not about pro-life all life. I eat meat, I eat broccoli. These things are living, but I kill them and I eat them. So it pro, being pro-life isn't just about being pro anything that is alive. Being pro-life is about preserving the sanctity of human life. A sperm is not a human life. A, an unfertilized egg is not a human life. A fertilized egg is a human life. Now, I want to try and move the argument forward a bit from this argument about consequences. No, 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 no. Let me finish. Right? So, I want to ask you, uh, do you have any limits on abortion? Are there any, is there any point at which you would say that an abortion is wrong? I guess, in my opinion, it depends on the month. If, you, if women can have an abortion the moment, like, in the eighth month, you know? But I don't think that's medically possible in general. But you the can't. moment, in my opinion, that the baby, okay, maybe he has a heartbeat, I think if it's not dangerous for the woman and she was aware of it before, then it is, might be, like, a bit from like, to kill, like, to... To kill, yes. Not you to kill, right. not to right. kill. <laughs> you said it right, to kill. You got to my mind. No, but you know what? When the baby has a heart, when it's like, almost there because you can give birth in the eighth yeah. month so i think in this there should be maybe a bit limitation on the situation in which you can have an abortion because if it is a danger to the woman's life you can still have an abortion in every situation in my opinion okay. and in general maybe there should be a bit limits if they're like in the eighth month or something like that but before that if it's like first month something like that when it's still a bunch of cells that are an idea to have a baby because just like a sperm it's a possibility that it will develop it's still a bunch of cells that are gonna develop but they're still not developed into a baby so it's still a bunch of cells just like a sperm is an idea that can become a baby can i reply so in that situation can maybe I reply? yes so if i understood you correctly and i don't want to mischaracterize you because okay. that's not the way you do good debates but if i understood you correctly and correct me if i'm wrong okay. you're saying that after the heartbeat starts you would be against abortion am i straw manning you or is that correct no, what I'm saying is after the part where a woman can give birth or like you can like the baby can come out and it would be right. alive and it wouldn't like come out as a bunch of cells, right. then it is. So you're saying when it's viable? You're saying when it's viable? It should be. You're saying when it's viable outside the womb? Yes, it should. There should be limitations perhaps on the abortion, but not necessarily abandon it completely because there are still situations, in my opinion. So my question was, which you haven't answered. Here's my question. Would you say that there's any point at which abortion becomes wrong? Mm, I wouldn't define it as wrong. I doubt I define it as doubtful and No, my question was, is there any point at which you would say abortion is wrong? When it's viable. When it's viable. And okay. It's in under certain right. circumstances. So, 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 circumstances, so I want to, I want to reply. I want to reply because if you're saying that the point is that it's viable when it becomes viable, then you agree with me. We need to change the law in this country and around the world because at this moment in time we are aborting viable babies. It is legal to abort a child even past the point that it's viable, and we've seen this because we've had children outside of the womb that are living that are being born earlier than the point at which abortion becomes illegal so would you agree with me right now that we should restrict abortion laws in this country even further and move the point at which you can have abortion backwards so that it includes those that that point at 22 weeks when a child can be born outside of the womb 
question is, can it be born or do you have to take it and put it like special circumstances that like... Like uh, an incubator or a life support machine. Yeah, something like that, which is not technically still like viable, but you have to give it so much special support. So it is a bunch of right. so you're just developing great, them great. further. So, so would you, would you, by that logic, would you say, is a child still dependent on its mother outside of its, outside of the womb for life support? What do you mean? Does a mother prevent a child from dying through supporting its life outside of the womb? Yes, but let me, okay, can I clarify? So what's point? the I, difference? No, I feel like it didn't come across. Can I clarify my point? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying, I'm not saying um, life support as in like fitting it or stuff like that. I mean, in general, you need a medical way and a specific technological way to keep it alive. Like helping to it to create, breathe. To create a uh, environment similar to the womb because it wouldn't survive outside the womb. Do you do you also agree with um, that we can euthanize people that are on life support then? Can we kill people on life support? If, if they wish to, but I'm sorry. I think does, the child, does the child get to choose? I thought you were arguing about having a fertilized, like a fertilized egg being aborted. Yeah. So my, my point is, if you're saying that it's okay to have an abortion if the child requires special assistance outside of the womb, then it logically follows. Let me finish. Let me finish. It logically follows that you should be okay with society deciding to euthanize adults who are on life support. And then you said, well, only if they choose to. One second, one second. The child doesn't get a choice. There is no one speaking up for the child. And the reality is, what I find really interesting is all those people that are arguing for abortion are already alive. How do you know what the child wants at that age? Can I say two things? First of all, I would rather my mom aborting me if she wished to in the beginning, if she would have conceived me in early life, like in her, in her earlier years, if she would have not wished to conceive me and she would decide to abort me, I would rather that than her having to have me. That's first of all. Yeah. Now, second of all, I'm not talking about special life support as in the baby is already alive, but it needs like help breathing or something like that. I mean, if you take the baby out, but you have to develop it in the form of like similar to like the womb because it wouldn't actually be alive outside the womb because it's not yet fully a baby I'm not talking about life support or something like that. I'm talking about genuinely because sometimes you create a circumstance that are similar to the womb because the baby wouldn't survive outside the womb that is what I'm talking about I'm not talking about life support we, we, we assist children all the way through their lives to survive a one-year-old baby can't survive without the that's, love that's, that's of its mother of society. Not needing, not about so, so, life so, so my point is, my point is, your argument, your argument seems to fall down in two different ways. The first way it falls down is that if you're consistent to your own position, you can't object to society euthanizing people of life support, whether they choose to or not. Whether they choose, whether they choose to or not, because. You are okay with society euthanizing viable children through abortion, even though they don't get a choice. Secondly, secondly, let, let's let's try and let's try and dig into the the reasoning. Can I let, no, 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 let, no, 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 no. You you can wait like I've done for you. The second point. Let's come back to this idea of the clump of the cells, okay? Because it seems to me your argument is a clump of cells can't exist on its own. Therefore, it's okay to abort it. What is that clump of cells? Is it alive and is it human? Okay, first of all, no, it is not human yet. What makes a human a human? It, it's Define not, for me a human. No, it is biologically a human. It doesn't have Thank feelings and, and wants like a human being. Okay. It doesn't have any... Wait, it, wait. We had a, you had a bunch of points. We want to answer all of them. So first of all, that. Do you want to develop that? Well, I was also thinking about the, your discussion about consequences. You kept going back to consequences, and you were, kept talking about how consequences are Important. feelings getting hurt. That's true, but you kept referring to consequences as feelings getting hurt. That is not the only consequence that no, can happen. Isn't. Okay, the a mother can first of all it can cause that labor can cause death true. as some um, yep, some with some cases, and also a constant reminder of of for example. Um, uh, sexual assault or rape are you aware that pregnancies on account of rape or incest equal less than one percent of all cases okay but that is also a case that you are arguing for and you're also saying that there shouldn't be abortion for that case agreed Aren't but you're arguing for abortion just because a woman doesn't want to accept consequence 
that is not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that a consequence is not just feelings getting hurt. And I think an abortion is also a consequence. Also, you kept referring back to the fact that people make mistakes. I think True. people can get pregnant on, not only by making mistakes. People can um, take all the right steps and still get pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, that and, and, and what I'm saying, I'm and saying, I want to be clear, I want to be clear. Wait, can I, 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 I want to be clear, I want to be clear. Yes. I'm completely in favour. It it's a logically follows that if I'm pro-life, I have to want the state to be pro-woman who's pregnant. It follows. I can't obviously be pro-life and then argue that women who fall into pregnancy through mistake or unwanted pregnancy for one reason or another should be abandoned by the state. If the state requires a woman to carry a life to completion, then it is incumbent upon that same state not only to help that woman in that pregnancy and afterwards, but it's also incumbent upon the state to hold the man who is equally responsible to account for his part of the action. I see your point, but that doesn't still might not help. It might still not be the help that the woman needs. Wait, and can I add something? First yeah. of all, you can say rape. A woman that gets pregnant due to rape is not the same because why would she face the consequences? Well, you don't know who the rapist is. But why should the child? Because it's why not a child. child. Wait, yeah, and wait. Yeah, like you Let's come back to wait, the wait, idea okay. of being human. Multiple stuff, okay? First of all, it's not a child yet, and uh, let me explain that to you. When I said viable kids, I mentioned that can survive in an environment that is not womb simulated or womb presented. So you talk about children that are uh, viable because they're in the womb. So that goes against what I've said. I'm not talking about life support. I'm talking about womb or womb simulated situation. And that also contradicts your reasoning about euthanized people who are on life support because that is what I'm talking are about. You, are you, are not you, in the womb. It's not the same. Are you aware that there's now artificial wombs which we've grown an, a, an, a, an embryo of a lamb to being a, an actual lamb? Are you aware of that? Yeah. Right. Therefore, if we have, going from your logic about viability, if, say, we develop this technology to the degree that any child can be preserved in a fake womb, an artificial womb, would you agree, would you agree, would you agree, because of that new technology, to make all abortion illegal? No, no. Right, so in other words, your argument is not about viability. No, it is because it isn't. I stated. Because I've just demonstrated that okay, you I would you would still physically. carry out abortion even if we could preserve the viability of an embryo. I, I stated so viability not, in, not in a womb simulated situation because that still means the baby completely dependent on the womb because it's not a baby yet. It's not the woman's womb though, is it? If you can take an, an embryo, egg and a sperm and put, and, it, in, and put it in a place yes, and make it a baby. Where it lives. Is that a bad thing? Okay. Is no. it a bad thing? It's not no, bad to create an artificial womb. Is it a good thing? You're saying there are no human, other humans involved. Is it involved. a good thing? You take an egg and a sperm, you put it in a womb, that is something else. So there are no humans involved. One second, no, no, one second, no, one second. No, one second, one second, one second. Yeah. One second. Because your argument, your, I want to come back actually to this idea of, of what is a human. And the, the reason why I want to move past the viability argument is because I think I've demonstrated that your logic isn't about viability. Because in an artificial womb, which we've already demonstrated we can do this because we've done it with lambs, we could have done it with sheep. You can take a fertilized egg from a woman who's got into a pregnancy she didn't want and, and you can grow that child in an artificial womb. Can so I if it was, point, if, one second, it. if it was just about viability, you should now be in favor of making all abortion illegal and developing that technology. But the point, that, the point that the point that I want to come it. to, the point that I want, yes, you can, of course. But the point I would like to move the conversation on to is the idea of what is a human. I would like you to define to me. Don't be like Keir Starmer, who couldn't define what a woman is, and all these progressive transgenderists who can't define what a woman is. Argue, tell me, what is a human being? Okay, first of all, regarding the viability argument, what I am saying is that the moment an embryo needs a womb-like uh, environment to survive, it's probably still a bunch of cells we need to develop to become an actual baby. So that does not count as viability for me because that's still developing it to become an embryo, a baby. 
it's not the same as viability of like the embryo comes out and it is a baby and you just need some sort of life support such as breathalyzing it in order for it to survive. That's first of all, it's not the, w the way you perceived it. Second of all, regarding transgender, wait, regarding transgenders and women, I just want to state, state that for a second. A woman is whoever identifies as a woman. That is the definition <laughs> of a woman. And I'm stating it clearly because I got transgender friends. Okay? okay, and whoever identifies as a woman is a woman. Uh, and what is a human? A human. And yes. what is a human? I don't think we should um, talk about the definition of a human. Cause Why not? This is absolutely essential to the finish, whole argument. Let her finish, but and then you can. I don't answer. think that that is the argument because um, you can define a human as you said, like genetics, right? A fertilized egg is a human because it has the genes of a human. Yes. Right, but I still don't think that that matters because um, the before the baby is born, I think. The consequences of a baby being born that is unwanted is a lot worse, even if it's a human or not, whatever you define, it's still worse than it not being born. As it has no feelings and no wants and you know, it let's doesn't define it like that. It doesn't if it doesn't have a brain yet, it can't think, it can't perceive, it doesn't I have don't feelings. Think, I don't I think it's still human. Okay, a fertilized egg is biologically a, a human cell. Thank you. Okay. Biologically. And it's a biologically a human cell, but yes. I don't think a human Strictly cell still needs to be a, such a high priority in terms of um, hurting a human being that has so, 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 so can I reply that? Yes. Wait, so can I reply? Like, yeah, 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 go on. Okay, personally. So just, just bear with us, otherwise your point will get lost on the camera. Okay. We noticed. Yeah. First time here. Welcome, welcome. I've come here for six years. And I've had, right. So you were going to wait one more point and then I'm going to reply. Okay. Um, can I talk? Is that like... Yes, it's, it's recording. Okay. So um, we're talking about human and what's the definition yes. of human, right? So first of all, biologically it might be human. And I agree with that. But I think that socially accepted like construct if something does not have a brain, it cannot perceive, it cannot think, it cannot feel, and it doesn't even have a heartbeat, so it's not fully even alive yet, because the definition of life is like being, um, is, the, is having a heartbeat, or at least not being brain dead in some circumstances, which means, wait, which means that it does not think, does not feel, does not perceive, does not emotionally uh, perceive anything, then I believe it's not exactly the same. It's a social construct, even if biologically is. Can I ask you a question no, in return? No. Yeah, 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 go on. How do you, uh, how do you define dad, like okay. a dad human? So, so let, let, let me reply to the idea of how do we define a human being? And I, I, wanna, I wanna thank you for accepting and admitting that biologically what we are talking about is a human being, biologically. Now, you have, let me finish, I didn't interrupt you, I didn't interrupt you, allow me to finish. Now, you have all the same organs of a chimpanzee. Oh no, a chimpanzee has all the same organs that you do. But you're not a chimpanzee, and a chimpanzee is not a human being. So it isn't about the organs. It is, that's not what makes you a human being. The, the idea of the argument of the heartbeat is inconsequential and neither is consciousness. So here's to your social, na, 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 here's, here's to your argument about social contracts in terms of defining human life. You argued it based upon feelings, emotions and heart. Well, a human being who is having a heart transplant loses consciousness, can't feel anything and for a certain amount of time doesn't have a heart. But you wouldn't say at that moment that they cease to be a human being. Be why? Because that isn't what defines a human being. The only definition that is uniquely able to stand up to any kind of criticism is that a human being is something that is growing and that is genetically human and that has a unique genetic code from any other human being. You wanted to jump in one yeah, comment? Yeah, Bob, if my mum aborted me at six months, would I be alive or dead now? You'd be dead. I would be, that's as yeah. simple as that. It is plain and simple as that. All human beings travel through a whole route of, from conception right through to natural death. Yes. And they're human from the beginning of conception to natural death. And anything that interferes with that artificially from conception means I'd be dead. So my mum, you know, it's yes. as simple as that. Can you answer my question, please, first? Sorry, I thought I had, but go on. My question, question was, how do you define it? Can I, wait, first of all, I'll answer your example regarding a heart friends, but you know that that person will go back to being alive, right? Even if it's technically metaphorical. It's not guaranteed. Hmm? 
It's not guaranteed. Okay, but there is a there is a chance without consequences. There's, to other one second. People. One second. Wait. 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 There's less chance of someone having a heart transplant being alive at the end of it than a child who is fertilized in the womb. There's less chance. There is a hun nearly a hundred percent chance that the child inside the womb, fertilized egg, is alive up until the point that it stops being alive than a human being having a heart transplant. Okay, but what I'm saying is, in this situation, there are no consequences to other person's continuation of life, let's say like that way. And second of all, I still want you to define that for me, because if you say- What am I defining, sorry? Dead, a dead person. Because if you're saying that only person. after yes. having an abortion, a person is dead, yes. then I want you to define right. what is a dead person. A dead person, a dead human being, is a human being who ceases to grow and has a genetic code that is human. But you keep focusing on the definition of a human being. Because okay. it, no, one second. But the, the reason why this is absolutely important, yeah. because I am assuming in good faith and good will that you would never want to kill a human being, that you would not agree with killing human beings. So, if, so what's absolutely fundamental to this question is what is a human being, unless you want to state that you are in favor of killing human beings. I'm not saying I'm in favor of killing human beings. I'm saying that a, a bunch of cells with no feelings and no wants yes. in the world yes. who, who has the potential to ruin someone's life or multiple people's life, yes. okay, is something that can be not killed but aborted. Can I Do you agree with capital can I punishment? That? With what? Sorry. Do you agree with executing prisoners? I do not. You don't know? I yeah. do not. I do you not. do not. Okay. Do prisoners ruin other people's lives? But I don't think that that's the same thing. I think Why not? Because, because they do they not ruin other pe people's lives the moment they're in prison and do not continue to commit. Did, did, the, uh, did the child, one second, did the child ruin the woman, the mother's life or did the consensual sex between... No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm using an example. You used examples, I'm using an example. Did the child ruin the woman's life or did her consensual sex ruin her life? Again, uh, but that Answer example that is not... Can I speak? Right, but you Can are... I speak for a second? Sure. Okay. Answer First the of all, the birth of the baby is what ruins your life. I just want to start with that. The act of sex... That wasn't my question. I, you are referring to... You are being... You pro-life in my, all my cases. My question... Yes. My question is... In the example... I, I stuck with your 16-year-old girl example, so be fair. No, 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 no. I, we stuck with that. I'm giving you my hypothesis, my example. In an example of consensual sex, so no rape, no force, no incest, a woman makes a choice with a man. Who ruined her life? And the pregnancy does ruin her life. Let's just say, put that into the example as well. Who ruined her life? Her choice or the fertilized egg? Who ruined her life? The fertilized egg, in my opinion. Who ruined the fertilized her life? egg. So, uh, a fertilized egg, one second, one second. A fertilized egg who had no choice in the woman's decision to have consensual sex is responsible for the woman having consensual sex. Do you know what? That's working backwards in time. Can you realize that? I, can I, maybe her decision who caused, who caused the uh, fertilized egg is what started it. But the egg Should she be wait, protected wait, from a consequence? No, let me finish, please. Go on, go on. I'm sorry, I hate being interrupted. The, the consen consensual sex, the act itself, does not ruin her life. Thank you. What does not ruin her life? What create? What it creates might, but it is not the act itself, and you have to create that. But whose fault is that? In my example, whose well, fault? I'd is have it? to like think. We're actually. In my example, whose fault is it? In, I don't think your example is the rep like represents the. No, actually, hold on one second. Yeah. My example represents 99% of all abortions. Using contraception. My yeah, yeah, my example of consensual sex leading to abortion represents 99% of all abortions. I'm just asking you to clarify your example. You didn't. My example you. is yeah. that if a woman chooses to have an abortion yes. after consensual sex who's 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 without contraception okay. who's response but we agree that in this example pregnancy would ruin her life who is responsible for ruining her life the fertilized egg 
or the woman and the man. Okay, so I think the contraception is a like an important thing in that example. But in my example, yeah, yeah. they choose not to use contraception. Okay, I see. Now, the reason they choose not to use contraception is also an important thing. Because, because they enjoy naked sex, they think it feels better. Well, I think that is a very specific example. Yes, we're using a very specific example. I did her, for her for five minutes on a 16-year-old girl. Now I'm asking you to be charitable and deal with my... It is a responsibility in this case. However... Should, should, the, child, should the child suffer? But it's not yet. a child and it's, it's not, not a child yet. Why isn't it's it a child? Suffering. It's not a child yet and it's not Why suffering. It not and I think an abortion is also a consequence for her decision. It is also a very difficult decision for her to make and it is a consequence for her, I think, wrong decision. Do, do you think we should protect people from making bad choices? In, um, in what means? If I make a bad choice that has consequences to my life, should the state intervene and protect me from my bad choices? In what means? In any means. Not always, I don't think so. Not always? Yes. And why do you give pregnancy as an exception to uh, the rule? I think... I'm sorry. So it's okay. So what I'm saying is, I'm saying is, people need to face their consequences. If you make a bad choice, own it, take the responsibility for it. I, I also believe, do, would you like to join in the conversation? The mother doesn't bear the responsibility, the child does. Yes, I agree. If you make a child live with a mother who is abusive, neglectful or doesn't want that child, yep. the child bears that responsibility yes. for the whole of society, for yes. the rest of its life. Right. How can you say that's okay? I'm not saying that child abuse is okay. What I'm saying is that killing your child to protect you from the consequences of your choices is not okay. But it's not killing, it's wait, wait, abortion, and abortion is also wait, a consequence. So let's come back to, I agree, can abortion I is a consequence, I agree, that is true. Yes. And lots of women suffer because they have abortions. Yes, but I think they suffer. Do you know that the pro-life movement was created by women, is led by women, and is dominated by women. Can I? Okay. Okay. So, and really, just a second. Sorry, Bob. Okay. So, two things. First of all, you're saying theoretically that something that can develop into a baby is. It's not a theory. It's a fact. Okay. So, some, you're saying that something that can develop into a baby is a living a human. Let, let, let's let's okay, let, let, let's talk about the meaning of a child. Okay. Can I first of all finish my argument? Yeah. Go on. So, a lot of times people have like uh, fertilized eggs outside of the womb and then the second and it's a fertilized egg and the second you put it into the womb it doesn't work just like in a sex something the egg something the sperm doesn't catch egg it's the same okay it's I don't agree with artificial fertilization why not because what it does is it destroys um, embryos and I'm against it but that's some people's only chance to get pregnant. They can. I don't agree with it. Okay, but I just I would, okay. The, the thing is, there's no. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me be clear. Let me clear. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. I am against artificial fertilization because the way that artificial fertilization works is by destroying embryos. As a pro-lifer, I cannot agree with artificial insemination because it destroys human life. Yeah, how it destroys embryos, it creates embryos. No, it doesn't. It kills, it, what it does is it, it puts in multiple embryos with the full knowledge that most of those embryos will die. It's a deliberate murder of children. Just like in the womb, some embryos doesn't go through, sometimes it doesn't work. But let no, that's me, fine, let a miscarriage has happened. Let me go back to my point, please, okay? And based on your definition, still, okay, based on your definition, let's say an embryo was created by an uh, out of the outer body uh, fertilization. An embryo was created. Yes. Okay? So you're claiming that even though it's outside, it's not even in the womb yet, it's still a baby. You're claiming that, right? I'm claiming it's That's a human being and okay. it's alive. Okay. The chance that it will survive in the womb is very small. Agreed. Just like the chance a sperm would fertilize an egg is very small and they both... Also agreed. Egg. So based on that logic, it is very logical that a sperm would also be considered a living human being because it is... No. 
No, and then this comes back to the argument, and this is why I said, this is why I said, and this, are you, 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 are you got, got, got guys all right to continue? Yeah? Yeah, just not for a long time. Because Fair enough, when you're ready to go, when, when, you're, when you're ready to go, let me know and we'll start wrapping it up. But, okay. Okay, so let, let, I'll, let me, I'll, I'll, because you're ladies and I want to be a gentleman, I'll let you have the last word. So this is going to be my last word. I think fundamentally to this entire discourse, we need to have a definition of what is a human being. And all, no, 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 no. And the problem is, the problem is, what is a human being is not subjective. It is objective. A human being is something that has the genetic code of a human. That's why you're not a chimpanzee. That's why you're not a gorilla. And even though they have all the same organs that you do, you're down to every single organ, you've got the same, but you're not a chimpanzee. So it's not about the organs. It's not about consciousness, because we all spend, God willing, eight hours unconscious every day, where we don't feel, where we don't interact, where we're not conscious. It's not about your heartbeat, because people who are having heart transplants don't have a heartbeat. They don't have a heart for a few minutes. The point is, the only definition that can stand up to scrutiny, consistent scrutiny, i.e. there's no exceptions to get round it, is to say that a human being is that which has, is growing, a living human being is that which is growing and has the genetic code of a human. I believe that people should not be protected from their consequences, but they should be helped in their mistakes. I'm not anti-woman, I'm pro-woman, I'm not anti, but I'm also pro-life. But also, I think men are, in this entire discourse keep getting a free pass because women, whether they have the abortion or not, are still getting to deal with all the consequences and abortion is a consequence. But men are not being held responsible for their part in creating a life. And I think that men should be held responsible for their part in getting a life. So that's my final word. And now I'm going to let you guys have a final word so that you can go. I see what you're saying about being a human being. I think that is where we disagree because we believe that um, uh, the clump of cell that does have the human uh, genes and everything, I, we don't think that it has the same rights as a human being like you and I. Since it's only biologically counts as a human being, socially constructed, it's not exactly a human being, and it does not have the same rights. Also, even if it is biological. I think it doesn't have the same impact on the on the world and on other people as you and I as human beings. Um, also. So you were talking about the man being responsible for creating a life. The thing is that I don't think it is. It needs to be uh, referred to as creating a life yet, because uh, the clump of cell in the uterus is not a life yet. It doesn't have uh, wants and feelings. It, we don't know it. It doesn't have a path in this life. It hasn't had an impact uh, or a significant enough impact on this world. I don't think that that is. The, I agree with you that it's a human, genetically it's a human, but I think that is where we disagree that this is not the same as a human being like, like you and me. Okay, so guys, before you go, before you go, I, I just want to say thank you so much you. for having a really lovely discussion. And I, I just want to say, I just want to say, I think that, that for me, the one point that I thought was a bit sad that we didn't really dig into was this definition of the human being. But let's not rehash the argument, you know. It didn't happen. But that's the question that I think all this argument rests upon. And I would like to give you a gift. I give everybody a gift who I have a debate with and a discussion with. So if you just bear with me, I'll try and find it for you. Um, so, no, bear with us. Do you guys... Um, it doesn't happen daily, Speaker's Corner. It happens weekly, every Sunday. And I try to come... What? I live in London, yeah. And I'd be happy to meet with you guys and talk about this more if you want to. But I would like to give you a gift. And I would like, you know, have a listen to it. Have a look at it. And, you know, do you guys have a gospel at home? Do you guys either, like, read the New Testament or anything? We're not a Christian. That's fine. That's not my question. I said, do you have one? <coughs> Can I give you one? 
Can I give you one as a gift? I don't. Are you guys living together or apart? Uh, it's fine. We can have one. We have We're an old testament. You live very near. That. So in yeah. in fact, then let me do this. We, do, we have an old testament at home. You have an old testament at home. Yes, I'm Jewish. Okay. We're both Jewish. We're both Jewish. All right. Okay. So you've that that that's the New Testament. Maybe have a have a have a, have a read of it. It, it is the sequel. You're absolutely right. It's part two. It's part two of the part two of the Abrahamic faith. God bless. Take care. So is that JC's camera? So guys, the the whole the whole issue of debate rests upon when does life begin, and I have not yet heard a definition by a pro-abortionist who is in favour of abortion about what makes a human being that can stand up to ex the exceptions, the criticisms of it. The only definition of a human being that stands up to any scrutiny is the idea of ge genetic code and growth. Because that's something that human beings have consistently all the way through their life, including during heart transplants. The reality is if we agree that a fertilized egg is human, then that means we cannot justify the murder of that human being. So the suggestion might be a bit of a weird one, but I'm gonna go with it. The idea that an aspect of when a human exists, it, it's not just in the biology, it's not just in the, the, the material, it's in the relationships that start to develop. Like, you can the, suggest the, that, yeah. The human is all kind of is, uh, it emerges as um, it starts to connect with the external world. Can I reply to that immediately? Sure.